Hi there, I'm Mr. Doyle, and this is a great undertaking. Stephen King's 1977 collection of short stories entitled Night Shift spawned an impressive number of movie and TV adaptations. From the book's 20 stories came multiple feature film adaptations and made-for-TV movies or short films. Of these adaptations, few would garner critical acclaim and fewer still would be looked back on with nostalgic fondness. To be frank, most of them are shit. In this video, we will be taking a look at the film adaptation for Graveyard Shift, which unfortunately firmly lands itself on the shit list. History and Background Graveyard Shift is a 1990 horror film directed by Ralph Singleton with a screenplay written by John Esposito. The film had a budget of $10.5 million and eked out $11.6 million at the box office. The film was predominantly shot in the village of Harmony, Maine at Bartlett Yarns Incorporated, which was the oldest woolen yarn mill in the United States at the time of filming. The historic Bartlett Mill was renamed Bachman Mills for the movie as an homage to King's pseudonym Richard Bachman. The film was received poorly by critics, and while I was unable to find any reviews from the time of the film's release, it currently holds a 13% approval rating based on eight reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. So it seems that the initial reactions have proven themselves to be the only thing about this movie that has stood the test of time. Stephen King himself heavily disliked this film, and upon its release, he named it one of his least favorite adaptations, referring to the film as, quote, a quick exploitation picture, unquote. And I'm sorry if you can hear dogs barking. Because there are dogs barking. Is it by the book? While feature-length films that utilize full King novels as their source material tend to suffer from the challenge of having to condense hundreds and in some cases thousands of pages of content to fit within the confines of a couple of hours, films made from King's short stories are often faced with the inverse of this problem. The film adaptations of novels require scenes and, in some instances, entire themes to be cut from the film, while short story adaptations have to add content in order to lengthen and pad their runtime. This often causes the original story to be changed, manipulated, and in some cases made virtually unrecognizable. Unfortunately, Graveyard Shift, while maintaining the setting and overall premise of the short story it is based on, is no exception. If you're unfamiliar with the short story, the abridged version is as follows. A young man takes a job at a textile mill and gets recruited to help clean out the basement. The basement is full of moldy old furniture and textiles and, worst of all, rats, which have been living, breeding, and growing down there likely for decades. The rats don't take kindly to being evicted, and they aren't shy about showing the team of men sent to remove them how they feel about their intrusion. But as it turns out, the rats may not be the only creatures the extermination team ought to be worried about. From the opening scene, it is clear that this won't be a strict retelling of the short story, which is to be expected for the reasons I explained just moments ago. And I'm not a stickler for strictly sticking to the source material, so I try not to let that be a deciding factor in how I feel about any of the King adaptations. The overall theme never strays too far from the path, however, that doesn't make it any more watchable. The movie is full of moments that were intended to be taken seriously, but are often laughable. We're gifted with a lot of gifted with a lot of characters that were not in the short story, as well as layers of sexual harassment, casual misogyny, a romantic courtship, and a cartoonish amount of the grown-up equivalent of schoolyard bullying, none of which were a part of the original story. But of course they had to add all this extra bullshit to make their movie long enough, which really is just the worst excuse. I don't know, I'm going to have to agree with King on this one. It feels a whole lot like a misguided effort to cash in on King's name. This movie shouldn't have been made. Not like this anyway. Soundtrack and score. It wasn't until I went to write this segment that I realized I had no recollection of this film's soundtrack whatsoever. 
thought maybe it was just like mixed really low in the in the overall production or maybe it just was very subtle but I, honestly i don't know if there was a soundtrack at all suffice it to say it made zero impression on me and had zero impact on the film. If there was a soundtrack, which I assume there must have been, I imagine it was quiet, droning string sounds, swelling noises, and all of the standard horror movie soundtrack tropes of the era. Cast and acting. The lead actor, David Andrews, does a decent enough job, but there is one major problem. He, he's supposed to be portraying a college boy. His asshole boss refers to him as college boy throughout the movie, but at the time of filming, Andrews was already and very obviously nearly 40 years old. Andrews gives off some Emilio Estevez vibes, and aside from making some goofy faces during serious moments, he's fine. Uh, Stephen Mox the actor playing the asshole boss at the mill named Warwick, well, he can't seem to decide what accent to go with. Uh, at first I thought he was like doing a Russian thing, but then he speaks with like a pronounced Northern New England drawl. And, and then the next moment he has no noticeable accent or regional dialect or anything. I, I thought maybe he was a foreign actor and that was why his dialect was all over the place, but nope. He was born in Philly, raised in Brooklyn Heights, and then moved to Connecticut, so not sure what was going on there. Everyone else in the film was either mediocre or straight up terrible. Everyone. Special effects and cinematography. This movie doesn't have much going for it, but what it lacks in well, nearly everything, it almost makes up for it, or at least it tries to make up for it with the sets and creature effects. As mentioned previously, the movie was shot in an actual mill and numerous other rundown mills and factories were used as locations for the shoot as well. Everything is substantially dark, dingy, and dirty. In terms of capturing that particular detail of the book, they nailed it. Throughout the movie, we get to see little bits and pieces of what turns out to be the monster boss rat, and when we finally get to see the creature in all its glory during the last 10 minutes or so of the movie, it's actually pretty badass. Uh, this sucker is a big, slimy, nasty son of a bitch that looks really great. No CGI is used, and it's done entirely with puppetry, makeup, and costuming. It's easily the best part of the movie, but it's too little too late. Final thoughts. Fortunately for me, I maintain low expectations for most King adaptations. So this movie delivered exactly as I had anticipated it would. Virtually no thrills, subpar acting, awful dialogue, and unintentional levels of cheese that I've come to expect from the majority of 80s and 90s King flicks. If you haven't seen this one, don't or just skip to the last 10 minutes of the movie and check out the slimy rat bat. That's the only part worth watching in my opinion, and it seems that the critics, King himself among them, would likely agree. New videos drop on this channel every Saturday, so check out the next installment of The Night Shift and my ongoing, seemingly endless videos for all things Stephen King in the weeks, months, and maybe years to come. Okay, goodbye. Be sure to click like and subscribe to the channel for my continued analysis of all things Stephen King, pretty please with blood and guts on top. My name is Mr. Doyle, and this has been a great undertaking.